Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto Power of Destruction High School DXD. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Abbasider and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. Father, I was told you wished to speak to me. To an onlooker unaware of the situation it would have made for a confusing sight when a boy, or rather a young man, addressed an even younger looking boy as his father. They were in a spacious but extravagant room. Pillars lined with gold and jewels as the walls depicted beautiful works of art, consisting of humanoid figures with certain details that were quite eye-catching. After all, humans didn't have three heads or six arms. At least, they shouldn't. Yes, Naruto the younger one replied. His voice was smooth but held a commanding undertone that demanded respect and attention, even if it wasn't done on purpose. It was interesting, and even his own son wasn't immune to its effect. Despite being father and son, their physical appearance shared little if no similarities. Whereas his father's hair was black with a blue shade to it, his was blonde. Very, very blonde to the point it was as if it had been touched by Amaterasu herself. But, the most interesting detail about him would have to be his eyes. Simply put, they were mesmerizing. While his father's were a simple green color, his could be compared to the intricacies of a kaleidoscope, with a myriad of vibrant colors and pattern of his arises that surrounded his pupils. Ones that twinkled when light reflected off it, at the same time causing them to change their pattern and color, and held unfathomable divinity within them. It was the first thing that caught anyone's attention that he'd meet, and a reason he would sometimes use a small illusion to change them to appear blue. I take it you're aware of Indra and the forces he's been gathering over the past few years. I do, father. Brahma told me a bit about it after he ah well, he called it training, but it sure didn't feel like it. His right eye twitched as he recalled the one-sided beatdown he suffered. If not for the blood running through his veins, he would have died the first time he had been hit by Brahma's flicks, which were more than enough to obliterate mountains. I see. At least you two used an artificial dimension this time, or else we'd be out of landmass with how much you two fight. Train, not fight, father. I'm not foolish enough to believe I stand a chance against Uncle Brahma if he's serious. There's a reason you three are feared throughout the supernatural world which is compassed out of powerful creatures. A chuckle was heard that echoed throughout the room. Don't sell yourself short. You're still a child in supernatural terms. Brahma, Vishnu and I have lived for millennia to get as powerful as we are now, and as young as you are, his eyes shone briefly. I can see a bright future ahead of you and hope to see you join us three in the ranks when you're older and more experienced. Naruto couldn't help but feel touched by his supportive words. Even if he didn't like being called a child. He was several decades old even if he didn't look like it. He was right of course, seeing as he himself was millennia old, but still. Thanks dad. Shiva's eyes widened for less than a second as his son addressed him as such, as opposed to his usual formal manner, and a small smile broke out on his visage. No problem. It's my duty as your father to keep you motivated. As long as you won't turn arrogant and start abusing your power I'm allowing you to act as you wish. But that was not why I requested to speak with you. Blinking a few times Naruto quickly compassed himself and nodded as his father was correct. Right. I was only told it was important which is why I came here so quick. It is. The Shinto pantheon has recently reached out to us. It's the first time it happened as they usually keep to themselves, much like we do and the same goes for the other pantheons. The message sent wasn't much other than they wished to arrange a meeting, but I'm debating whether or not to accept. Um didn't you tell me you were able to see into the future? Couldn't you make use of that and find out if it's worth your time? Oh, I could. Yet, it would be disrespectful to make use of it in this situation. Not to mention that my future sight isn't as accurate as you make it out to be. Only major events of importance are the ones I can see and predict. Else I'd be able to see the result of my eventual battle with Indra. I only know it will happen, not how or when. Naruto scratched his cheek at that. Oh I guess that makes more sense. It would almost be cheating otherwise. Now, when you say major events anything going to happen in the near future, I should know. Shiva shook his head. No, even as my son I'm not telling you. You'll have to wait for it to happen just as everyone else will. Oh come on. He whined which Shiva didn't find amusing. No, and that's final. Fine. Naruto stuck out his tongue as Shiva rolled his eyes at the childish gesture of his son, who quickly turned serious again. Back to the matter regarding the Shinto pantheon. I think you should accept. Even if it's just to humor them, it wouldn't hurt to find out what they want you know. His father hummed before slowly nodding. Yes, I can see what you mean. Thank you Naruto, I'll have Mahabali send them a response. You're free to leave. I am? Cool. By the way, dad, would it be fine if I visit Japan? Haven't been there in a while. Shiva waved his hand. You can. Just make sure to rein in your power while you're there. 
I'm not looking forward to complaints from the Shinto pantheon, especially not if a potential meeting will take place. His father warned him. The FFF, Naruto sputtered while looking as offended as he could. I have no idea what you mean. But I want dad. I promise to behave and you know I always keep my promises. Having said his piece, Shiva watched as his son simply disappeared. It wasn't anything flashy or notable, not even a magic circle. He was simply there was moment and gone the other. Shiva's eyes lingered on the spot his son had occupied seconds ago. His last words echoing in his mind as he gave a somewhat strained smile as they reminded him of his now deceased lover he reminds me so much of you, Kishina. If only you could see him now, I know you would be as proud of him as I am. Well then, where am I now Naruto mused to himself as he inspected his surroundings. When he teleported towards Japan he didn't really have a set destination in mind. He just thought and focused on Japan, after which he found himself here in this well it was a clearing of sorts. Quite small though. Deciding to get a better idea of where he was at and without attracting unwanted attention, he closed his eyes and cleared his mind, bringing his right hand to his chest and proceeding to extend his sensing ability. He reopened his eyes and turned his head towards his right when he managed to pick up on a surge of holy energy. And while normally not worthy of his attention, it was the amount he sensed that earned his interest. It definitely belonged to someone with four pairs of wings or more. Anything less was inconsequential to him and wouldn't even be a dot on his radar. The fact that it was likely a fallen angel, as he doubted an angel, would let their power to be sensed this carelessly, only had him more curious to what the cause was for the release of energy. So, with nothing better in mind he disappeared from his current location with the same simple teleportation he used before, his destination being the source of the holy energy being released. Staring up at the massive spear of light floating heading towards her, Rias finally admitted she had bitten more than she could chew. Perhaps it was a combination of the events leading up to this. Her new pawn, perverted as he was, had caused her to become overconfident with the knowledge of having a member with a long Inus class sacred gear in her peerage. Enough to the point where she lamented about her decision to decline her son as advice to call for backup of either her sister or her own brother. She really was stupid to think they would stand a chance against a cadre class fallen angel, and now she was paying the price. The ease of which he had brought down the members of her peerage was eye-opening. Riser and his peerage couldn't compare to the one-sided battle that was being fought. If it could even be called such. They had all tried their best, but Kakabiel's experience combined with pure power was simply overwhelming. And so, as Kakabiel cackled and sent his building-sized light spear towards them at neck-breaking speed, she focused her remaining energy to put up a barrier, knowing it wouldn't matter if it was hit. The phrase, time slows down when you're about to die proved itself when she could only stare defiantly up at what would be her demise. Crystalline tears trickled down her cheeks as she would at least die with her pride intact. However, just when Kakabiel's attack was going to reach her, Rias watched as out of nowhere a blonde-haired male appeared and taking the full brunt of the attack, forcing her to close her wide-eyed stare from the blinding light that resulted. She prepared herself for the explosion that followed only to slowly open one of her eyes when it didn't. The scene that greeted her was one that made her look in shock, mouth agape, and her arms limply at her sides. The unknown blonde stood there, with his back facing her and her peerage looking completely unscathed. Not even a single scratch could be seen. W who are you? Kakabiel demanded as he glared down at the blonde, surprise marring his features, as that light spear had enough power behind it to level this and several city blocks if it would have hit. And he took it to his face without a single damn scratch. MHM? Interesting, I didn't expect this to happen when I decided to check up on the source of this holy energy that was being released, the blonde tilted his head back a bit, locking his eyes on the levitating fallen angel in the sky above. W what's this Kakabiel questioned himself as his entire body locked up the moment the blonde's strange eyes settled on his form. He felt an invisible weight pushing against him from all sides. The blonde didn't move, but fear began to grasp the cadre, as he for less than a second found himself in a pitch black space, with the blonde's eyes staring him down. They were both beautiful as they were haunting as he felt like an insect under that stare. Not even his father made him feel this small. Kakabiel's body jerked when he managed to escape whatever it was he had just experienced. His breathing was haggard, and his fingers gave light twitches as he tried to control himself. He wasn't given a chance though when the blonde pointed his index finger at him, a thin beam of light shooting forward, too fast for Kakabiel to dodge, and he could only cry out in pain as it cut off three of his wings without any resistance. But the loss of three of his wings on one side, his balance was messed up, and Kakabiel could do nothing but bring his arms up as he rapidly started to descend, kicking up dust and dirt when impacting the ground. From behind him, Rias and her peerage, along with the two exorcists from the church, could only watch on in shock at the turn of events. They knew Kakabiel was strong. His wing counts and millennia of experience indicated such, along with how easy he defeated them after shrugging off their attacks. 
and to see that same man shakily getting to his feet, blood dripping down his chin and missing three of his wings, glaring at the blonde, made them realize their place on the food chain. Why Yukakabiel growled as he glared at the impassive blonde with all of his hate. This close I was this close to getting what I craved for. But you just had to ruin it for me, didn't you? Em listen I still don't know who you are, but you brought this on yourself. I just wanted to see what's up with the holy energy I sensed, only to be hit by your spear of light. He paused before his eyes widened and a shiver racked his form. Am, I hope father won't be upset when he hears of this it's not even an hour, and I manage to find myself in trouble at least I can claim self-defense I hope. The two exorcists along with a group of devils collectively had a drop of sweat running down the back of their heads as they listened to the blonde ramble. Rias idly wondered if all powerful people had these weird quirks as the image of her own brother and Sona's sister appeared in her mind. Now, what to do with you the words had barely left his lips before the blonde paused, his gaze focused on something else. The group wondered why he had stopped and Rias was about to command her peerage to finish the weak and wound had fallen off when the barrier put up by Sona's peerage shattered, followed by a flash of white. She actually had to bring up an arm from the gust of wind that accompanied the newcomer's arrival, and when she brought that same arm down, she could see Kakabiel was no longer on the ground, but instead held up by whoever just arrived. It was a figure covered in wide armor with transparent blue wings. They held Kakabiel by the back of his neck, as without an ounce of remorse ripped off his remaining wings, throwing them to the side, as black fathers fluttered in the air around the person. Ma the person spoke for the first time. Their voice somewhat muffled and robotic but it was most certainly male. And here I hoped I at least could get in a light workout, but it seems someone roughed you up already. He hovered a few feet above the ground, and Naruto could feel his stare on him which he met with his own. You're strong. The person said as just being this close had his senses scream at him to be on alert. And while it would have had most people back off, he wasn't most people and instead wanted to throw Kakabiel to the ground and attack the strange-eyed blonde. I am? The blonde raised an eyebrow and then shrugged. I guess so anyway, seeing as you got in under control I'm leaving. He said it so casually it took them a few seconds to process his words. Wait. Rias tried calling out to him but was too late as just like he appeared, his form simply disappeared before their eyes. The redhead hung her head when she realized he was gone. She had wanted to ask him to join her peerage. The power he had displayed with his dominance over Kakabiel, a cadre-class fallen angel, was too appealing to let go like that. Even if a part of her told her it would have never worked. Meanwhile, still holding on to Kakabiel who by now had passed out from a combination of the wound suffered and fatigue, the armor cover male blinked at the manner of which the blonde had left. He was definitely going to report this to Azazel. A person strong enough to reduce Kakabiel to the state he found him in was definitely someone to look out for. It didn't help that for the life of him he was unable to recognize him, which should have been easy with the blonde's unique features. As he was about to fly off, the voice coming from the brown-haired boy's gauntlet forced him to pause and made him let out a sigh. Things are never easy, are they? Naruto hummed a soft tune as he carelessly strolled about, wondering what to do next, when his interest was piqued upon recognizing the sudden arrival of a familiar energy signature, making his lips curve into a small smile as his form flickered towards it. Well, well. What brings you to these neck of the woods if you don't mind me asking, Nix? He turned around, immediately being met with a pair of dark blue orbs that belonged to the face of a smirking young woman. She brushed a few strands of her hair to the side, black as the night as seeming to absorb any light around her. Her movements caused her chest to jiggle which was definitely on the large side, almost ridiculously so as she herself held a smaller stature. A.W. Don't be like that we haven't spoken in Su Long. And for good reasons. But let's move past that and return to my earlier inquiry of what a primordial goddess such as yourself is doing here, in Shinto territory. Though her eyes twinkled as she began circling him. Couldn't the same be asked of you? son of Shiva, the great destroyer himself, here, in Japan. It just makes me curious what business you have here. Perhaps for fun. A place to clear your mind. Or something more romantic a woman perhaps. She swooned in a mocking manner as she stopped in front of him. You honestly think I'm telling you? He asked with a raised eyebrow. He sounded amused as he looked down at her, his eyes flashing a different combination of colors each time he would blink. Maybe? Naruto chuckled at her and shook his head. I don't think so. While not quite sure what you're up to I can only assume it's not in good nature. Who knows who you tell. Though, if you would have done so I may have to remind you I know what you're capable of and am confident enough to take matters in my own hands to make sure the message was clear, an immense amount of pressure filled the area they were in. Causing Nyx to widen her eyes and grit her teeth, hands clenched into fists while doing her best to withstand the feeling of an ocean's worth of water being poured on her. He only stopped when he saw she was about to lose consciousness and assured she knew that he won't put up with whatever she was scheming. 
once she felt him lessen the pressure on her, she took a deep, shuddering breath, as her cheeks were dusted in a rosy hue, while she tried to rub her thighs together. As a supernatural being, power was attraction, especially for women, and being subjected to such a massive amount was tantamount to the touch of a lover. I, I understand. Nix rasped out as she tried her hardest to get her body under control, which failed spectacularly as she only felt herself grown hotter when he gave her a hard stare. Good. His eyes softened. As long as you understand that there'll be no problems. He reached out and patted her head, making her face flush, while doing her best to glare at him. Stop that. She shoved his hand away and took a step back while straightening her hair. Why do you keep doing this each time we meet? Cause it's fun. He responded with a smile that seemed to infuriate her more. But there wasn't much she could do other than just accept it. He was stronger than her. Despite being a primordial goddess her power wasn't that high. At least not in comparison to the blonde before her. The F. Whatever. It was my mistake to search for you since this is how you're treating me. Naruto had to do a double take as she sounded actually hurt. Before he could apologize however, her form melted into darkness which then shot up into the sky before it disappeared. He palmed his head afterwards and groaned. Great job Naruto, you did it again. He performed a slight shake of his head as he sighed while staring up at the cloudless sky. Erg this has been more exhausting than he'd imagined it would. He really could use somewhere nice to relax. His eyes then lit up. How could he forget that? It was the perfect place to relax. It was familiar territory and he would always be welcome there. For good reason, of course as he teleported away. A soft moan left his lips as he leaned back, letting his head dangle over the edge as he stared ahead of him with half-lidded eyes. It was definitely a good idea to come here as the hot water had a soothing effect on his muscles. It has been an interesting day so far. It started by waking up early in the morning, getting a light workout done followed by breakfast, after which he had trained with Brahma for a couple hours until his entire body hurt to move. Lunch came as he was able to relax for an hour before he was called in by his father, where they had their little meeting. Then he arrived in Japan, got hit in the face by an oversized spear of light which he retaliated by demolishing some ten-winged fallen, met up with an old acquaintance of his, and now he was here, in one of Kyoto's private onsens, taking some time to relax. His ears gave a light twitch when he heard footsteps, even if the owner tried their best to be as silent as possible, sneaking up on him was almost impossible. He didn't bother turning around though, perfectly satisfied with staying in his current position. Not even a single movement was made as the water rippled, signaling that someone else was in there as well. He didn't even lift his head when two large, squishy and soft mounds with two hardened nubs pressed against his back, followed by two slender arms that wrapped around him from behind. Why didn't you tell me you were here? The feminine voice complained, making him give a small grunt as her warm breath tickled the back of his neck, which was followed by her lips. I had to find out myself. Uh, sorry. He apologized with a hiss as he felt her teeth sink in the area between his neck and shoulder. I just wanted to relax by myself. I would have let you know I was here afterwards, honest. It was true, but he wasn't sure if she could tell. MMM I'll forgive you this time. He heard her mumble before his head was turned to the side as her soft, supple lips took his with her own. He didn't fight it, quite the opposite actually as he welcomed her by parting his lips and allowing her to snake in her tongue. When they parted Naruto ran his tongue over his now moist lips from a combination of both their saliva. What was that for? He asked as he turned around and no time was wasted as she pressed herself against him. I just missed you. And I'm not the only one you know. She's been asking me when you'll be back and I can't stand the disappointment on her face whenever I tell her I don't know. The frown marred his face upon hearing that as he placed an arm around her, his chin coming to rest on top of her head as he let out a wistful sigh. I'm sorry again, but you know what might happen if I stay here too long and often and they'll find out. I don't want to know what I'd do in my anger if that were to happen. I, I understand. She suppressed a shiver that threatened to run through her. Her mind reminding her of a couple years ago, back when he had shown her his power after he had saved her those years ago. Probably not the best decision at the time, but she couldn't complain now. It was actually what also made her interested in him. The power he displayed back then had caused her to feel hot all over, as it triggered her heat cycle much earlier than it was planned, and she doubted she could have found someone better to spend it with. Oh. Kunu's birthday is coming up and I was wondering if you have a gift in mind for her. Again? He joked. She grows up so quick I may have something though, need to see if I can get my hands on it. You got something in mind. He felt her wiggle in his embrace as her hands caressed his arm. I might. Depends if your gift is better or not. We could just give her two gifts. It's her 11th birthday which is rather special. It is? She looked at him curiously. Well I have something in mind I'll keep a secret to both her and you, especially since we're giving her two gifts. Fine by me, wondering which one she'll like more. Naruto mused both to herself and her. 
knowing Kunu Wan couldn't be sure though she did seem more attached to him than Yusaka whenever he was there. Though that could also be due to him not able to spend as much time with her as she could, even if he wanted to. Also, I was just saying stuff, not sure if it's something special. He missed the deadpan look she gave him before it morphed in something sinful. He was brought out of his thoughts when he felt her smooth hand reaching in the water, moving lower and lower before wrapping around a certain organ which grew hard under her touch in no time. Um H here? He asked her in a whisper as his fingers twitched at her touch. And it wasn't just his fingers that were twitching. He got his answer when she sent him a sensual smirk while her hand started to glide up and down his organ. Well, he hasn't had any in quite some time, and denying someone as beautiful as her would almost be criminal so with it he gave in. He just hoped there would be a sound barrier active or else they had something to explain later. End chapter. Chapter 2. Um. Naruto let out a noise as he paused and looked up. He squinted with how the sun was shining down upon him, a clear blue sky accompanying the flaming ball up in the air. He stepped to the side and shot his arm up just as a silver blur shot past him, twirling on his heel, he took full advantage of the momentum as he slammed the person whose hand he had around their throat into the ground, forming a large crater while doing so. CHKR. Spittle and blood left Bali's mouth as he felt the air leave his lungs and his body hurting all over. He hadn't felt this much pain in a while and was too busy getting himself under control, he didn't have time to ponder about how the blonde had broken his armor around his face and neck without him noticing. Now, Vali's struggles to escape his hold were futile, as the blonde had one foot places on his arm to prevent him from using his sacred gear. I'm going to be generous and assume you aren't stupid enough to attack me and here to deliver a message instead. He sent the silver-haired teen a pointed look that promised pain if he tried anything before letting go of him and taking a couple steps back. Slowly Vali got to his feet, a look that showed his hunger for battle, to retaliate was on his face as he took deep breaths and rubbed his throat. Yes, I can tell right now you're the one to test my limits. Not the Red Dragon Emperor or the current Satans. My blood boils just being this close and demands me to fight you. But you're right. That isn't why I am here for. When I informed my superior of you taking care of Kakabiel, he got interested and asked me to invite you to the three-faction meeting that's going to be held one week from now. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Three-faction meeting. I assume it's attended by angels, fallen angels and devils. Yeah, Vali nodded. Naruto hummed as he thought it over. I'll think about it. Where's it held? At Kuo Academy, where you fought Kakabiel. The school. All right then. A bit weird but okay. Whether I appear or not I'm not sure. You'll see me around if I do. He spared the teen a passing glance as he walked for a couple feet before disappearing just like that. You got more of an idea who he is, Albion. This urge to fight him I've never had it happen before to this amount. I don't partner but be wary of him. The way he carries himself indicates his lack of care. Didn't he say he only dealt with Kakabiel because he was attacked first? You're right. I initially thought he was sent by one of the Satans, but he showed no interest in that redhead. Indeed, and that's dangerous. Unfortunately we arrived late or we could have seen what he was possible of. He's strong though, stronger than your teacher. I thought so as well. My throat is still a bit sore from his grip earlier. Thus be cautious around him. You're the first holder in a while I can get along with. Ollie smirked. Of course Albion. I still have my own goals I want to reach. Blue, transparent wings proceeded to form on his back before he flew off to Grigori and tell Azazel of the results of the little meeting he had. Far away, Naruto observed the blur that was Bali as he flew through the sky. How interesting, he actually looked forward to the boy's growth. Perhaps in time he'd be able to entertain him for a bit. With his sacred gear and heritage, Naruto was going to make sure to keep an eye on him. It wasn't often you'd come across a half-devil with a long -iness. He was also impressed with Bali's reserves. Up close as they were a little while ago, and he could sense they were much higher than one would expect from someone as young as he was. Of course, they weren't comparable to his own, but definitely one of the higher ones he had sensed from a devil. Within a few years Naruto figured he'd be a part of the upper echelon when it came to the devil hierarchy. If he'd ever joined that is given how he's associated with the fallen. Naruto suddenly felt a tingling sensation in the back of his mind. Knowing that this meant his father wanted to either see or speak to him, he quickly teleported back home. He didn't reappear in the same room his father was in, something he did out of respect. Instead he stood before a large door behind the room his father was in, and he could sense he wasn't alone. He wasn't worried though. Very few beings existed which could potentially harm him, and two of them had no interest, at least so he was told, and one was sealed away. So, acting casually he pushed the door open, an uninterested look on his face as he entered. What's up dad? You called for me. His voice trailed off, and he came to an abrupt stop when he spotted the trio of visitors present. 
or more specifically the sole woman of the three who was staring right back at him with equal surprise present in her eyes that were golden color. You they exclaimed both at the same time, causing the others to look weirdly at them, but also with curiosity. You know her, Naruto. Shiva asked his son, looking more interested than he had since their arrival. Likewise, the woman was dealing with similar questions of her own. Sister, who is that man? The question came from the male to her right. He was a head taller than she was. He had gray hair with bright blue eyes and an equally gray beard. His clothes consisted out of a gray haori with blue waves present on the sleeves, a white hakama and wooden sandals. I do but I do not know why he's here. Naruto. His father called for him again, still awaiting his answer. Um the blonde scratched his cheek at the situation he found himself in. This was not was not what he expected to happen when he arrived here. You see it's, well uh, I've met her several times though I wasn't aware of her true identity. You're not the only one. The woman mumbled. That's not what I am asking of you. I am asking how my son knows the Shinto goddess of the sun, Amaterasu. The trio that was in the same room as the father and son duo stared with shock between the two. What they had just learned was astronomical to the supernatural world. The god of destruction, Shiva, considered the most powerful being after the big three that were great red, office and Trihexia has a son, one they and no doubt the rest of the world was even aware of. However, Amaterasu seemed to be the most affected from the three, which was something Shiva quickly took note of. We have to do this right now. Yes. Shiva answered and Naruto knew he wasn't going to budge, so he hung his head with a long sigh. Duuk, Naruto groaned and ran his fingers through his hair. We've met each other several times now in Kyoto, though I know her by a different name, which in hindsight I should have figured out her actual identity myself. Why Kyoto? He was certainly familiar with the Japanese city that was inhabited by Yaokai and also ruled by one. But he couldn't think of a reason his son would be there and numerous times from what he understood. The part of him wanted to fish the information straight from his mind but refrained from doing so. One, it would damage the trust between the two which he didn't want. And two, his son's mental barriers were some of the hardest he had come across to where he'd know if he would try to enter his mind. Because, and here Naruto paused as he was still hesitating on what he was going to tell his father next. Perhaps it was fear that kept him from spilling out the information. The fear of his father's reaction when he'd tell him he had a grandchild he was unaware of. Despite not often showing it, Shiva cared greatly for his family, either by blood or those he considered to be one. Also, as far as he was aware only a select few knew he had a daughter. It was Kunu herself of course, her mother along with a select few she trusted, mostly the higher ranked yaokai that were part of her personal guard and also a Madarasu now that he knew who she actually was. Because I I have a, he drew the sentence out several times, wetting his lips with each pause. I have a daughter. He squeezed his eyes shut after the words finally managed to leave his mouth. He waited. And waited and waited some more before slowly opening his eyes when no reply came. He was still tense though, bracing himself for the inevitable disappointment on his father's face. But he was confused when there was no such thing when he eventually was able to look his father in the eyes. Instead, his face was set in stone with how stoic he appeared and it actually scared him even more. The daughter. My own son is a father. I have a grandchild I'm unaware of. Shiva uttered as he processed the words of his son. Why yes, it it's kept as a secret though. Only a handful of people know of her due to who I am. With a certain organization running in the background it's dangerous if they'd end up using them as a hostage once they find out about who I am and our relationship. I wouldn't put it past them to get something from me and in proxy you as well. I can't risk that dad, I don't even want to think what I'd do if something were to happen to either of them. After a tense moment of silence Shiva let out a soft and short chuckle. Foolish son of mine. If that was what you're afraid of wouldn't it be better if they were here with us? With Brahma, Vishnu and myself here only an utter fool would dare to launch an attack on us. Even Indra knows to steer clear of us here where the three of us reside. That's true and I wish it was that simple, but due to her own duties that's not possible. How so? Actually, who is the woman you have a child with? Shiva inquired, curious as to find out who had wormed their way into the heart of his son. Erm he scratched the back of his head as his cheeks were colored red before answering. You've probably heard of her but her name's Yasaka, she's a Kaiubi and leads the Yaokai faction in Kyoto. Hold on. One of the men that was present along with Amaterasu spoke up, reminding them that they weren't alone. Are you telling me that you got Yasaka pregnant? At the blonde's nod the man began to laugh. Oh wow, the matters regarding Kunu's father had been a hot topic in the supernatural when she had been born, you know. Rumors had it that he had either left her or that Yusaka had him disposed of. Naruto couldn't help but wince upon hearing those words. They were true, and he still cursed himself for the discomfort he had caused her by not revealing himself as Kunu's father to the public. 
She had told him of the muttering she had heard about her, along with the trouble his actions had brought her with the elder Yaokai, who found it a disgrace that she had a child out of wedlock, worse that she was raising her alone. The latter was just false as he did his fatherly duties just not in public. Aside from a select few, he was said to be a close friend of hers, which helped keeping their suspicion at bay, with the amount of time he had spent with her, and shortly after their daughter had been born. Yeah, I've heard those rumors as well. I had the urge to slaughter those that had bad-mouthed her, but they should be thankful she was able to change my mind. The kaleidoscopes that were his eyes turned a darker color as an oppressive aura began weighing down on those in the room along with him. Naruto. The simple uttering of his name by Shiva quickly had him recollect himself and give a small bow and apology. I want to meet them. Meet the mother to my granddaughter and the girl as well. How old is she? Naruto quickly perked up and smiled brightly. She's 10 years old and cute as a button. Her birthday is September 9th. No joke but no one that has met her has been able to resist her adorable charm, even Amaterasu over there can concede to that. The sun goddess gave a timid nod as she had instantly been smitten with a little girl when she had laid her eyes on her the first time. I see what my other request. When can I meet them? I'm in a week. It gives me some time to inform them and take care of some other business I have. Yusaka will probably be a bit hesitant, but knowing Kunu she's going to be jumping up and down in excitement at the prospect of meeting more family. By the way, he turned towards the three Shinto gods that were present. Are you aware of the three-faction meeting that will be held in a week in Kuo? Three-faction meeting? Can't say I'm aware of something like that happening. What about you sister? The Matarasu shook her head. No, I haven't been made aware either. You're saying it's happening next week and in Kuo no less. Yeah, I've got an invite just before I came here due to my actions, seeing the look on his father that asked for more, he did. When I went to Japan a week or two ago I sensed a high concentration of light magic, so I went to check it out. Well, I did not expect to see a spear of light heading to my face courtesy of Kakabiel. I think that was his name which was actually meant for some devils. Anyway, long story short which is actually not that long at all, I made sure no one was hurt, aside from Kakabiel, and prevented a war one think. Those devils did appear important before he was taken care of by this generation's divine dividing holder. Shiva blinked when he finished, so did the Shinto gods. A random trip to Japan resulted in you preventing a potential war. If you weren't my son I wouldn't believe it, but I can tell you're telling the truth. One wonders what Kakabiel was thinking since he weakened his faction even more from his actions, and fallen angels are already considered to be the weakest of the three. Naruto shrugged. A, hey, don't care. If the attack hadn't been aimed at me I wouldn't even have stepped in. I just had to remind the crow of his place, you know. I see. Then, Amaterasu took a step forward. As Amakami I ask of you to attend the meeting on behalf of the Shinto faction. If that's fine with Shiva Dono, of course. The god of destruction waved his hand. He's free to do as he wishes. My current interest lay in meeting my granddaughter and her mother. As long as his actions don't harm our pantheon at least. Ha. You know me dad. I'm always careful do you need me here for the rest of whatever you'll be discussing. If not I'll head to Kyoto and stay there for the week until the meeting takes place. Also allows me to tell them that you know of us and want to meet them while I'm at it. Sure, I can handle this on my own. I see you in a week or so then. Cool. Till then father. He gave a slight bow towards the Shinto trio before he teleported out of the room. He appeared in Kyoto, right in front of the entrance leading to the ground of the Yaokai Palace. Naruto only had to take a single step forward, his foot barely making contact with the ground, before he had to lean down with outstretched arms to catch the small blur that crashed into him. Papa. Came the excited joy-filled cry of the little girl he had caught in his arms as he stood up and twirled her around, relishing in the laughter that she let out along with the happiness he could see in those sparkling golden orbs she had inherited from her mother. Who knew? He returned before he brought her close, peppering her face with kisses as she squirmed in his arms. How's my little girl doing? Hope I wasn't gone for long. The little nine-tailed yaokai shook her head adamantly. No. I was sad, but now you are here again. She wrapped her little arms around his neck as Naruto proceeded to make his way into the palace. Her father's scent never failed to make her feel safe and comforted. So little princess of mine you know where I can find mama. Nodding her head at her father's question, Kunu held her hand out and pointed. That way. She chirped as Naruto complied much to the little girl's joy. Being carried by her father was one of the things she loved the most. It made her feel tall. With his daughter in his arms the blonde walked throughout the palace and its grounds. All around were Shinto priest and shrine maidens. Interesting to note was that they were all fox yakai, though they were all single-tailed ones and greeted them. The women with an alluring smile and a wave of their hands while the men gave him a nod in respect and acknowledgement. Where now? 
he asked Kunu after having walked through the large garden and entering the palace itself as there was a hallway that went either left or right. Um Kunu put up a thoughtful expression which had to be one of the cutest things he had seen in his life before she eventually pointed to the right. There. With a shrug Naruto followed where she was pointing as they entered a long hallway that had several sliding doors on each side. MHM where could she be, Naruto mused with a soft hum as he walked further and further. The sudden sensation of a pair of supple arms wrapping around his midsection from behind had him freeze mid-step before he heard a soothing voice whisper into his ears, along with a weight pressing against his back. Were you looking for me, Naruto? Even normal her voice still had that sensual tint to it, which was something that usually got him weak in the knees. Him holding Kunu was the sole reason this wasn't happening now, as the little fox looked over at her mother, using his shoulder to rest her chin on. Mama. Look, Papa is back. Isaka let out a soft laugh as she brushed a hand through her daughter's hair. I see that sweetheart. Has he told you what he's here for? No. Kunu shook her head sadly before Naruto patted the top of it. I'll tell the both of you if you can lead us somewhere more comfortable, Yusaka. He felt her arms leave his body after that before seeing her twirl around, so she was now in front of him, looking as beautiful as she always did, as his eyes briefly trailed towards the ample cleavage her Maiko outfit was showing before moving back to her face. Follow me then naru. Turning around, Yusaka lead the way, smirking as she emphasized her luscious figure with a sway in her steps, knowing fully well she had his attention. Huddled up together on the sofa, Yusaka was releasing soft purrs as she tried to press herself even closer to her fellow blonde who smiled at her attempts. They were already as close as they could get as Kunu had taken up the spot on his lap, something that actually had the vixen pout. Speaking of Kunu, the little girl was currently in the land of dreams. Cuddled against her father and bathing in his soothing presence, it hadn't even taken five minutes before she had lulled to sleep. The cute little ears on top of her head would twitch every now and then as Naruto ran his fingers through her soft tails. So, Yusaka began, tilting her head so she could look at his face. What's the reason for you being here? You usually aren't back this soon. Naruto couldn't help but flinch at her words, but didn't complain as he had kind of deserved this. It still hurts to have her say that, but he also knew she only said so because she liked nothing more than for them to be officially a family. My father knows about us. You, Kunu and I and wants to meet his granddaughter and her mother. He watched Yusaka's golden orbs widen. He knows how. I told him. There's a meeting between the Shinto and my father, and when I arrived Amaterasu was there as well. I recognized her and she did me which resulted in my father wanting an explanation. After fumbling around for a bit I came clean and he requested to meet you too. I see. She whispered as she rested her head back on his shoulder, a moment of silence followed. When does he want to meet us? Sometime next week. Naruto answered her. The exact day hasn't quite yet been decided as I'll end up attending the three-faction meeting that will be happening in Kuo which is also next week. Though I know it'll be after the meeting in Kuo. Three-faction meeting. Yusaka wondered. As in the meeting attended by the three biblical factions. Yep, spot on. I got invited due to taking care of a menace by the name of Kakabiel and indirectly saving the lives of some devils attending school there. You defeated Kakabiel. The blonde vixen asked with surprise before shaking her head. Hehe, he, of course you did. For a moment I forgot who I was talking to. Wow Yusaka-chan he whined but was silenced as Yusaka captured his lips with her own. His eyes along with hers fluttering close as he relaxed his body. A magic circle appeared on the floor next to the sofa as his energy took form into a copy of himself, which took the sleeping Kunu in its arms as Naruto ordered it to put Kunu in bed. Once they were alone Yusaka wasted no time pushing him onto his back and straddling him, her soft and nimble fingers trailing over her face as she licked her lips. It's been a couple days since we last had sex and I have a certain itch I need you to scratch. Really now? Naruto mused as his own hands weren't idle and busy rubbing up and down her sides. Have at me I say since I know you like to be on top. Oh Naruto kun I w i l l dot she was often the dominant one during their bouts of sex. Something about having such a powerful man writhing beneath her was exhilarating to Yasaka and she could already feel herself heating up at the thought. The days flew by when he spent time with his family. Most of his time spent over day was with Kunu who he had started small and simple training exercises with. He could sense destruction energy inside of her, which was a unique type of energy which only his father and he himself held. Hers still wasn't unlocked, though the amount was still very large. When her training would progress he'd plan on slowly letting the energy flow through her, so she's gotten used to it. It had to be overtime as doing it at once would only damage her. The nights on the other hand were filled with passion as he and Yusaka made love countless of times. He wouldn't be surprised if it would result in another child. He wasn't opposed to it. Yusaka wouldn't either as she enjoyed being a mother, and Kunu would be delighted with a younger sibling. 
However, today was different, noticeable by the mood in their home, which was one of the sadness as he had to leave for the meeting he was going to attend. Gunu had pretty much latched onto him from the moment she had woken up and barged into Yasaka and his shared bedroom. Even now as they ate breakfast the little fox was on his lap, her legs kicking back and forth as her tails were wrapped around him to make sure he couldn't escape. He didn't have the heart to tell her that he still could if he actually wanted to. Please, please take me with you papa. Kunu pleaded for the umpteenth time while giving him that look. Oof. He wasn't sure how much more he could take as his defenses seemed to shatter from her cuteness. Kunu, your father has to attend an important meeting that's not fitting for you. You'll understand when you're older and take over the position from me. But why Kunu whined at her mother. You never let me leave Kyoto. You said Papa is strong right, Mama. He can protect me from anything. Isaka looked at Naruto for help who merely shrugged. I mean, it's just a meeting you know. With the people attending an attack happening is unlikely less they hate their life. If worse comes to worse I can simply teleport back here and drop her off. She still looked a bit doubtful. I don't know. Isaka, Naruto called her name. Let's be honest, she's right in that she has never left Kyoto. Not that I blame you for that. The fault lies with me as well, but if there's ever been a good time for her to experience what it's like it would be now. Barring with my father and uncles I can't think of a safer place. Fine. Yusaka sighed in defeat. Still, listening to her little girl cheer brought her happiness. Just make sure she'll be alright, Naruto. The blonde in question reached over the table and took her hand in his, intertwining their fingers while nodding. Of course Yusaka. I will protect her with my life, always will. Who knew, sweetie? The little girl stopped her cheers and looked at her mother with a tilt of her head. Yes mama. How about you go and make yourself ready while I'll discuss some matters with papa. The girl's eyes lit up and with a nod she ran out of the room leaving the adult to themselves. Um, what do you want to discuss Yusaka? He watched as she got to her feet. His eyes taking in every single one of her movements as she came over to him and sat on his lap, facing him. Oh, nothing at all. at least not with words. And with a predatory glint shining in her eyes she went on the offensive. End chapter. Chapter 3. Leaving from Kyoto was met with an over-exaggerated goodbye courtesy of Yasaka. If he didn't know better it was as if this was going to be the last time they'd see her. Hell, even through her tears, fake or not, she managed to threaten him if anything were to happen to Kunu. And he wouldn't admit so out loud, but he gulped. Though that was more so from the look in her eyes when she threatened him. It was one that told him regardless of the difference in power, she'd maim him with everything she had, if it's the last thing she'd do. Safe to say that he was sufficiently warned which is why he had put up a barrier around Kunu and himself. It wasn't a physical barrier. No, it was one made out of his own energy, invisible to the naked eye and couldn't be sensed. At least as far as he was aware. And now he was walking around the city, taking a longer route to the school the meeting would be taking place. Kunu was sitting on his shoulders, something that was simple due to her being on the short side for her age. Her hands were fisting his hair, but it didn't really bother him as he could tell she was excited with how she was taking in her surroundings. He was glad she was enjoying her first time out of Kyoto. He paid no mind to the look sent their way, mostly of women who either gushed over his daughter or would stare at him with a blush. Turning the corner Naruto slowed down as he watched the scene he had walked in on play out. He gave a soft squeeze to one of Kunu's legs and made a shushing motion. It was amusing as he watched Bali appearing to goad the Ritid's peerage. The way he seemed unconcerned even when he had two swords against his throat while continuing to trash talk the brown-haired teen. Though anyone that had some amount of power could tell they didn't stand a chance should Bali choose to attack. Oh? I see you've accepted the invitation. Bali suddenly said. Confused as to who the white dragon emperor was talking to, the group looked around before finally spotting him. You. They all exclaimed as they took a step back in caution. They tried to look fearless, but it was a failure, and they knew it as well as they were reminded of how easily he had taken down Kakabiel, who had been toying with them. Kunu meanwhile seemed to misunderstand their reaction as she waved towards them in a greeting. Undoubtedly it would have been quite a cute sight, but it wasn't due to the person's shoulders she was sitting on. Of course, Naruto ignored the group as he made his way closer to Bali. How could I not attend the meeting where history will be made? Who would have thought it took a deranged crow for three factions to meet up, amazing isn't it? Um can I ask why you're here? And who's she? The Redeed asked as she had arrived not even a minute after he had been found out. She was glancing at the little blonde who was staring at the academy building with awe. She looked adorable. Well, I think it's obvious why I'm here, no. After all, it was I who had taken care of that crow for you. As for your other question, this is Kunu, isn't she cute? Say hi Kunu. The little blonde blinked a few times before shifting her gaze at the Redeed and her group. Hi. She chirped with a bright smile and a wave before her hands went back to her father's hair. 
Is it wise to bring children to a meeting attended by the three factions? If Naruto could have shrugged he would have. Don't see why not. After all, aren't you children as well? He smirked when he saw a few of their eyes twitch at his words. Though you don't have to worry about her. If there's someone powerful enough to harm her you'd have a bigger issue to deal with. For a brief moment the illusion over his eyes faltered and his eyes, blue like the ocean itself, were replaced by ones that held a myriad of colors and filled with an incomprehensible amount of power that rooted not only Rhea's but the rest of her peerage and even Bali in their place. Yet, quick as it came it was gone, leaving them to wonder if it was their imagination as his eyes had returned to blue. And when they finally snapped out of their reverie, the blonde was no longer standing there which Bali took as a sign to leave as well, no longer interested in staying around. Who's the empty chair for? The question was asked by one of the two Satan's present and strongest devil alive, Serzich's Lucifer. His inquiry had both the leader of heaven and his fellow Satan give the fallen general a curious look. As far as they were aware this was between the biblical factions and they were all accounted for as Serzich's glanced through the room at everyone present, waving towards his little sister who was talking to one of her peerage members and pouting when she ignored him. He's someone I've invited as he has played a critical role in defeating Kakabiel. In fact, according to my student if it weren't for him we wouldn't be having this meeting and likely in a war, the careless manner of speaking was a bit unnerving to some of the younger ones present, but that was quickly washed away when they watched Azazel perk up. Oh. That should be him. The door leading to the room the meeting was being helped was opened and at once their heads turned to the source, watching with interest to see who this person Azazel spoke about was. Well, not all of them as Rias and her peerage along with Azazel and his student Bali were aware of who was still missing. Though even they had to admit they didn't expect for a little blonde girl with ears of a fox and nine fluffy looking tails coming out of her back, with the tips of her hair, ears and tails, turning a more red color to barge inside, ignoring them completely as she turned around and laughed while making faces at the blonde male that entered the room after her. At least he was considered enough to close the door after him. The man seemed to ignore the atmosphere in the room as he lifted the little girl up in his arm, poking her cheek while casually strolling over to where the empty seat was at and then sitting down. For a moment all eyes were on the little girl sitting on the older blonde's lap. Each of the faction leaders quickly recognizing exactly who she was, as there was only one other blonde with nine fox tails and ears out there who had a daughter than fit the girl's description. Still, that didn't explain what sort of relationship there was between them and the blonde male, though from their interactions as affectionate manner of how he was treating her, Gears slowly began to spin. Though, Serzich's was the one to speak up. Would you mind introducing yourself? and explain why you've brought Yusaka Dono's daughter with you? He wanted to tell him this was no meeting for children, but that would be hypocritical considering his little sister and the Citrieris had members that were children as well. And from Azazel's surprised face the man had expected him to come here alone. I'm Naruto the blonde spoke up as he eyed those present in the room. Just Naruto and I'm attending here on behalf of the Shinto Pantheon and due to my involvement with the incident two weeks ago. At the mention of the Shinto Pantheon, the leaders of the faction sat a bit straighter in their seat. As for the little one here, he ruffled Kunu's hair with a hand which had her pout, resulting in Seraphil resisted to scream out how cute she looked. She was bugging me to go along since this is her first time out of Kyoto. And despite how hard I tried she wasn't going to budge. Though I expected nothing less from my daughter. He knew he dropped a bomb by revealing that. The whole supernatural world was going to be aware of who Kunu's father is once this was done, but it didn't matter who knew or not. One positive is that this should get rid of the countless of men wanting her hand, especially those devils that wanted her both for her political power and add her to their harem. P.F. He had read through some of those letters that wished to meet her had subsequently burned them afterwards. Isaka had told him her standing put her above joining someone's harem to be reduced to just another number. No, she wanted the man she was in a relationship to focus on her and not a dozen others. And knew it was what she could get if she just waited. Well, it was Naruto who spoke, now that we got that out of the way, how about we get to the matter at hand, the reason this meeting has been called. For a second or two Naruto closed his eyes as he could sense dozens of beings outside who he assumed were back up from either faction, given the different energies they had and the amount of it. Yes, let's do that since everyone of interest is here. Serzich has cleared his throat one before continuing. Approximately two weeks ago Kakabiel with the help of some rogue priests and exorcist, launched an attack on Kuo, his goal was to kill both Rias and Sona and spark another great war. Glances were sent towards Azazel who looked rather bored. Thankfully his attempt was thwarted by Naruto, according to the report Seraphil and I had been given. He paused here and Michael took the opportunity to direct a small bow to the blonde who was currently tickling the little fox Uakai in his lap, which had more than a few deadpan at him. I want to thank you for your work. If you hadn't acted who knows what situation we'd be in right now. Hmm? Oh, yeah of course. 
Naruto nodded, though he didn't even spare the leader of heaven a glance. His attitude made some wonder why he was chosen by the Shinto pantheon, due to how disrespectful he was acting, but Michael wasn't offended in the slightest. Their heads then turned towards Azazel who figured they wanted to hear what he had to say on the matter. Ah sorry about that. We had some suspicion Kakabiel was up to something as I had more men keep an eye on him. He managed to sneak out sometime, though. I assure however that he was acting on his own. If worse came to worse, I also had the White Dragon Emperor sent after him once I was aware of what he was planning. I then punished Kakabiel by placing him in the lowest level of hell for permanent freezing. What about Kakabiel's motives? The governor of Grigori shrugged. He was dissatisfied with how the war ended. He'd always go on about how we should have pushed through. It was either we would have won or end up all killed. On the other hand, I have no interest in war of any sort. Azazel then leaned forward with his arms on the table. But let's get to the point why we're all here today. His words confused Rias, Sona and their peerages. Naruto merely rose an eyebrow as he did listen in. Peace. It's what the true intentions of this meeting are. Angels, fallen angels and devils, our current three-way deadlock is only harming our way of life, wouldn't you agree? I concur, Michael said, since the death of father and the previous Satans during the Great War, we've adjusted. Even now, the leaders of the three biblical factions all in one room and conversing like civilized beings is something that would have never happened with the old powers still in place. Though, we are not the only ones that should make a decision on this. Red and white dragon emperors, each one with the potential to change the word, what do you say? HMPH. Vali crossed his arms as he stared boredly ahead of him. I don't really care. As long as I can fight strong people whatever happens is not of my concern. As expected, still, you can fight strong people without a war. And you, Red Dragon Emperor. Hey. Me. W well um that's a bit hard to say right now, I mean uh. Seeing how Issei clearly had trouble answering the question Azazel decided to make it easier on him. See it this way, hide you Issei. If there's a war you won't be able to make babies with Rhea's Gremory. But with peace you'll be able to spend as much time to make babies with her. E eh. I, I choose peace. I want to make babies with but you. He exclaimed loud and proud, not bothered by the stares sent his way. Even Naruto had looked at him after his sudden outburst, staring at him like he was some weird creature for saying stuff such as that do since her older brother was here in the room. Though he didn't seem bothered by the boy's words. Rather he appeared amused, leaving Naruto to think if they're all some weirdos. Very well, I think it's decided then. If we're all in favor Azazel wasn't allowed to finish as an enormous magic circle formed above the school, followed by their surroundings turning a red color, and Issei looked around to see a few of his fellow students frozen in their spot. What time appears to have stopped? He muttered confused. He noticed each of the faction leaders unaffected, same for the blonde and the little fox Yaokai in his lap who was looking around in wonder. It seems so, Azazel said casually. Though those of us with superior power aren't affected, Indeed, we are protected by the power of our dragons. Vali told Issei who too didn't appear bothered by the situation they were now in. He then gestured to those that had their weapons out. And they're protected by their holy swords. An explosion then rocked the building, and Issei ran up to peer out of one of the windows to see dozens of people emerging from magic circles in the sky. It looked kind of creepy. Who are they? Magicians. Seraphil answered him, looking unchurastically serious. Still, Michael stood up from where he was seated. What's the cause of all of this? He referred to those frozen in time. Forbidden Baylor View, a sacred gear that grants the user the ability to stop time. You know what this means, right? Serzichas looked at his younger sister who nodded. Asper has fallen in enemy hands and forced into his balance breaker. Rhea said as she clenched had hand into a fist. How dare they use on of her peerage members like that? But what do we do? Issei asked as he looked towards the faction leaders as a battle waged on outside. They were unable to call for reinforcements due to the area being sealed off. HAA. A heavy sigh was heard, and they all turned to Naruto, who slowly got to his feet after letting Kunu sit down on the table. He stretched his limbs, rolling his shoulders and suppressing a yawn that threatened to escape. How unexpected to attack a meeting attended by the leaders of the biblical factions. Foolish, but it's a nice change of pace of the otherwise boring meeting. He lifted Kunu back up in his arms and calmly walked to join up with the others. Look, Kunu, fireworks. He pointed out of the window to the bright flashes happening. He ignored the look sent his way for the disrespect as men of each faction were dying in front of their eyes. Rias, how about you go and take care of your bishop and take a say with you? The redhead quickly nodded at her brother's suggestion. Seeing that, Azazel addressed Vali as well. Go ahead, cut loose. I know you want to. Ha, eh, Vali smirked. Of course, I was waiting for that. He wasted no time as he barged out of the room, wings forming on his back, and he turned into a blur, too fast to be hit by any of their attacks. 
Volley came to a halt mid-air, smirking. Balance Breaker, Banishing Dragon. A glow encompassed his form as armor began to cover him from head to toe. Back in the room, a teleportation circle had formed beneath Rhea's and her pawn as they got ready to save her bishop. And just as they left, Issei briefly caught a glimpse of his rival, wiping out dozens of magicians with a single attack, making him grit his teeth at the disparity of strength between them. Naruto abruptly turned around, alerting the others just as a yellow magic circle appeared in the middle of the room. The faction leaders were quickly on alert, especially both Serzich's and Serafal, who easily recognized it to who the magic circle belonged to. You? Serafal exclaimed as a womanly figure emerged from the magic circle. It was a tall, young-looking woman with brown hair, thick rimmed glasses clad in rather revealing garments. She smirked, seemingly basking on the attention that was on her before speaking. Greetings fake satans, Serzich's, Serafal. The Terrier Leviathan, Azazel was the one to address her. What is a descendant of the original Leviathan here? Simple, she brought up her hand that was holding a staff. To bring chaos and destruction to the world. And like that an explosion engulfed the room. The Terrier clicked her tongue disappointedly when the dust and dirt that had been kicked up from the explosion died down and revealing the faction leaders to be unharmed. Worse was that they were working together to form a barrier around them and the younger ones. Huh, that was something her head swiveled to the source, and she wasn't the only one as they all saw the blonde completely unharmed. His daughter held securely in his arms and an amused smile on his face, asking if that was it. Oh? What do we have here? I wasn't informed of someone matching your appearance being here still, it doesn't matter. I will complete what I've come here for. And that is? Seraphil asked her. The revolution. With God and the old Satans not around, there's no need to abide by these rules that, and to take back what is rightfully mine. Your title which is my birthright. Which is why I'm going to kill you here today. The Oazazel breathed out a sigh of relief. And here I thought the devils had planned a coup d'etat. Then again, taking over the world isn't something that we can let happen just like that. Lurg. All this talking is boring. Are we going to fight or what? This is the opportunity to shine in my daughter's eyes. Naruto said as he took a step forward. The illusion covering his eyes had disappeared, those colorful orbs zeroed in on Kateria who couldn't help but feel like she was being watched by a predator. Wait. Let me Naruto raised a hand, silencing Azazel. No, on behalf of the Shinto pantheon I need to remove threats here in Japan. I just hope she'll put up more of a fight compared to Kakabiel which was just a waste of my time. Naruto let go of Kunu who to the surprise of those watching and even herself floated in the air. One of the magicians tried to attack her from behind, but when the attack in the form of a bolt of light neared her, a purple barrier shot up, the attack dissolving upon contact. In response, Naruto snapped his head towards the offender. Clenching his fist as a pillar of purple-colored energy shot up from the ground, engulfing not only the magician that fired the attack, but everything else in a hundred-foot radius when it expended. When the attack died down, the result spoke for themselves as nothing was left. Even on the ground there was a deep and dark hole, one that went as far as the eye could see. Not even the barrier surrounding the school was left intact as a clear hole had been formed which was quickly closed up. In their own barrier, the members of the three factions eyed the after-effects with nothing short of surprise. And in Serzich's case suspicion as that attack was very similar to his own power of destruction, with how it had reduced whatever it had come in contact with. Yet, he couldn't detect a trace of demonic energy, and whatever he had used even managed to ignore the barrier that was put up which they could all tell was a high-level one. It told him that he could easily get them all out of here. It just added to the mystery of who the blonde really was, but he knew now was not the time for answers and just kept on watching, supplying energy to keep up their own barrier, while his queen and wife analyzed the barrier for weaknesses they could use to escape. Kateria was weary of the blonde after seeing the strange attack and quickly took flight where she began her own offense. A trio of magic circles formed which shot out serpents made out of her demonic energy. Her attack held enough power to reduce a high-class devil to nothing, but to her shock, the blonde lazily batted them aside before his form flickered out of existence and was then behind her, giving her a careless backhand that sent her sprawling through the air. She regained her balance, groaning as he hit much harder than she would have thought he did before quickly attacking again. More and more serpents shot towards the blonde who continued to dodge them or flip them away. Enough. Kateria screamed as he was making a fool out of her. A small magic circle formed out of which a pitch black snake came which merged with her. From his position Naruto's gaze sharpened when her aura turned a darker orange. Her power just doubled no, quadrupled itself he analyzed and was proven correct as her demonic energy exploded outwards. He then quickly held his hand out in front of him when Kateria formed a large magic circle that shot out a thick concentrated beam of her demonic energy. The arrogant smirk on her face left when she noticed he was holding her attack back with just the palm of his hand. He clenched said palm which resulted in him dissipating her attack. 
that was impressive. I'm not sure but it was better than your previous attempts. Oh, and it seems the time is no longer stopped. He looked down to see Rias, Sona and their peerages standing with the faction leaders. He even waved at Kunu who noticed and waved back. So are you going to actually attempt to win here or would it be better if I just ended? Such a shame you failed to live up to my expectations, but I guess that's partially my own fault down below the members of the three factions couldn't help but stare at him like he was crazy for how he was antagonizing the enemy. The Uder Kateria heaved, her eyes twitching as she glared at the bored looking blonde. How dare he she was a descendant of the original Leviathan. The one that was going to kickstart a new year. Losing to this damnable blonde was unacceptable. She threw both her arms outwards and Naruto actually raised his eyebrows when her arms expended like some sort of tentacles and began homing in on him. When he noticed that she wasn't going to give up Naruto stopped dodging, allowing her tentacle arms to wrap around him. Ha! Ha 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 ha! She let out a maniacal cackle. If I'm going to die then I will make sure to bring you with me. After hearing that Naruto couldn't help but sigh disappointingly as he shook his head. I don't think I will. Yusaka will try to revive me only to kill me herself if she finds out I die here, and I'm damn sure it'll be more painful than whatever this might be. With that a purple aura engulfed his form, the tentacle arms wrapped around him were quickly reduced to nothing. Ateria tried to flee, but Naruto wasn't going to allow this as he pointed a finger at her, freezing her in place much to her shock and fear. He snapped his fingers with his other hand, and they all watched as magic circles began to form by the hundreds to the point the entire sky was filled with them. With another snap of his fingers a barrier was formed around the Menkateria. And when he no longer held her in place, every single magic circle exploded with a force that would have put a nuclear bomb to shame. The explosion was so bright Naruto had teleported to where Kunu was floating, disabling the barrier and covering her eyes lest she'd end up blind. The bright flash of light seemed to go on forever, but when it died down nothing was there except for the barrier he had formed. He was about to float down and join the others who stared wearily at him when his form flickered again, which was followed by a flash of silver as volley. Still in his balance breaker hovered where he had previously been with his arm outstretched and his hand clenched into a fist. Were you trying to hurt my daughter? The calm manner of which Naruto said those words were unnerving as Bali felt himself being crushed by an unfathomable weight even in his armor. And no he managed to gasp out, aware the blonde knew he was lying, but the crushing weight disappeared nonetheless. Good. I promise you that if you lay a single finger on Kunu I will end you and your entire bloodline. Yes, even that deranged grandfather of yours got that little bad. He didn't bother waiting for a reply, knowing Vali was too shocked to talk as he slowly floated down. So you're betraying us, Vali. Snapping out of his shock Vali responded. Indeed. Sorry Azizel, but things look a lot more interesting on this side. I see, Azizel muttered with a nod, rather accepting of the whole ordeal. I take it you're joining Cow's Brigade. Cow's Brigade. Issa mumbled in confusion which was shared by more of the people present. Yes Cow's Brigade. A dangerous organization we recently got wind of. We managed to find out that their leader is none other than the Auroboros Dragon, Office. When Azazel dropped the name of the Infinite Dragon God, one of the strongest beings in existence, there was no surprise that the faction leaders became much more attentive. It's true that I've sided with Office, but I can assure you that I have no interest in world domination, and neither is Office. We came together to make use of our power, simple as that. I see guess it's come to no surprise given the blood that runs through you. Still, I'm relieved that you didn't team up with Kateria, given that both of you had your birthright stolen from you. Azazel could hear the devils mutter and focus on Vali. Why don't you introduce yourself, completely this time? Very well. Not like you're giving me a choice. My name is Vali Lucifer, descendant of the original Lucifer. Born from the union between the grandson of the original Lucifer and a human. To legitimize his claim four pairs of wings joined the ones from his sacred gear. Yes, you with the blood flowing through you of the original Lucifer, along with the long Ina sacred gear. There's no doubt you will be the strongest white dragon emperor in history. I do say, Vali called out. Don't you think your fate is cruel? Me, with the strongest dragon and the blood of Lucifer. Well you're just a mere human. Unlike me, without your boosted gear or nothing. It's disappointing to the point it's almost funny. We're supposed to be rivals. The Red Dragon Emperor against the White Dragon Emperor, but the difference in strength is larger than the gap between heaven and hell. Actually, no, it's more than that. What about it? Where are you going with this? Issei asked with anger flowing through him. I was thinking what if you became an Avenger? Would you become stronger if I kill your parents? You'd live with a goal, one that's not as pathetic as your existence currently is. Yes, I feel it already. That anger, I want more of it. Perhaps I'll kill them in front of you as you watch, helplessly to act, and you only have yourself to blame in the end. Naruto turned towards the brown-haired teen to see him shaking from Vali's words. 
He wondered what was going through the boy's mind, wishing he had his father's mind-reading ability right now. Oh well, watching this play out was amusing as well, even more than that woman who failed to keep his attention. You dare to bring my parents into this? I I will kill you. With a scream power exploded out of his say, followed by a flash of light which when it died down, showed him covered in his scale mail. I won't allow someone like you to lay a hand on my parents. But that said his say shot upwards, his form a red blur to most as he met Bali in midair. They were two streaks of red and silver that illuminated the sky. To an onlooker it might appear even, but Naruto knew better. The only reason Issei was matching Vali was due to whatever Azazel had given him. And even then, it was clear the former was throwing wild punches. That sword Naruto glanced towards Michael after seeing the sword Issei used along with his sacred gear. Still, it's not enough. And true to his words, Vali slammed Issei down into the ground after diving his power. Whoa. Kunu looked on with awe, clapping her hands at the spectacle happening in front of her. It was like one of those fantasy movies she had watched. By the way Kunu, don't uh, don't tell mama of what's happened here alright. Or else papa will be hurt, a lot. More hi do say. Give me more. Vali cackled as he held his hands out and their surroundings started to warp. Issei. Azazel called out to the boy who looked around confused. You need to act quickly. His power is having everything around him. In other words, if this keeps up your butt you, Rhea's Grimmery's breast will also become half their size. W what? That I won't allow that. Issei screamed as power surged out of him to unseen heights. Boost 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 boost. The surrounding area started to become affected by Issei's sudden surge in power. Pieces of rock began to float and the school itself, or at least what was left of it was destroyed as well. Volley. I won't allow you to lay a hand on but you, got that you bastard. In the blink of the ISA was in front of Vali, who due to not expecting his increased speed, was unable to defend himself from the fist that was rammed into his stomach. He tried to put some distance between himself and his rival, but Issei wasn't letting up and managed to catch up to him, grabbing onto Vali's armor, where he proceeded to slam another fist into his chest, stunned, Vali wasn't able to defend himself properly, as Issei slammed his head into his, breaking the armor that covered their faces of both of them. Still filled with rage Issei assaulted Vali with a combination of kicks and punches which he ended with a double-handed hammer punch, which sent the white dragon emperor crashing into the ground. Interesting, hi do Issei. Vali managed to get back to his feet to the surprise of Rias and the disbelief of Issei. To think you'd be able to push me to this point. I will make sure not to play around next time if there is one. Albion, you think it's worth it to show him the juggernaut drive. Forget it Vali. This situation is not favorable for us. I, who am about to awaken. Listen to me Vali. I'm the heavenly dragon who has to the relief of Albion, Vali's chant was interrupted as the barrier surrounding them broke due to the new arrival. Iku what brings you here? We're about to head out and fight with the Northern Earth Gods, and I know you wanted to join in. Biku responded, twirling the staff in his hand and resting it on his shoulder that was covered by the armor he wore. Right, I forgot. Who are you? Issei demanded, a bit miffed at the casual conversation those two were having. His name is Biku, as Azul told him. He's a descendant of the victorious fighting Buddha, Sun Wukong. Still, to think someone like him would join Cao's brigade. Sun Wukong Han Naruto repeated as he walked over to Azazel. He was running his fingers through his daughter's hair as she was tired and half asleep. Hey monkey boy, is that old ape still Indra's lapdog? Next to him Azazel choked on his spit and Bhikkhu himself wasn't doing much better. Their reaction was for a good reason of course, considering Sun Wukong was a revered figure in the supernatural, especially the Yaokai faction. I dunno. Bhikkhu shrugged. I don't keep up with him. I'm more free-spirited than he is. He's been pushing for me to follow in his footsteps, but I'm not about that. A N Y W A Y dot he tapped the ground beneath him with as a large dark magic circle formed. It's time for us to go. H M P H. Hi do say, let's hope our next meeting will be more intense. With much more power. Vali and Bhikkhu sank into the magic circle, and Issei was about to go after them when he lost his scale mail, the accessory Azazel had given him had reached its limit. Well then, Naruto glanced up at the setting sky. This had taken much longer than he had imagined it would. Still, to think they were forming a treaty his father will most certainly be interested. He'd have to keep an eye out for Cow's brigade as well, though he was already aware of the existence of the organization prior to this, office being the leader was new. Giving the collection of people one more parting glance, Naruto simply teleported away. Without a sound or trace, leaving Azazel to look around as he noticed the two blondes missing. Naruto reappeared inside of the Yaokai Palace in Kyoto. He looked around before letting out a breath of relief when Yasaka hadn't shown herself. He hoped she wouldn't be back for some time as he had returned much later than he had told her. And, well, it would be hard to explain why a simple meeting had taken this long. 
and if she'd find out he'd be in a world of hurt. So he cautiously towards the living room that was a bit deeper in the palace. There, he slid the door open and peeked inside, when no one was there he formed a small smile and entered. After sliding the door closed he made his way over to the sofa, where he sat down with Kunu on his lap, asleep. H-A-A, what a relief. Never have I been more happy that she's not Naruto didn't finish and that for a good reason. His skin turned a shade or two wider and slowly, oh so slowly he turned his head to the side where he felt an extra weight joining him on the sofa. There, sitting next to him was Yusaka, somehow appearing next to him without him noticing. Though, the reason for his reaction wasn't that she was there. Rather, it was the smile on her face, one that told him he better explain or else. And currently the or else option was looking worse by the moment. Um, I uh, I have Kunu on my lap so you can't harm me without waking her up. He said hurriedly. However, his eyes widened in panic when he felt her being lifted from his lap, as Yusaka used one of her long golden tails and wrapped them around their daughter, moving her so she was now behind her, where she curled her other tails around Kunu. What was that? She quipped and Naruto gulped at the glint in her eyes. Please don't he whimpered. Violence is bad, remember. That's what you said so it would be hypocritical of you to hurt me. I mean, Kunu's unharmed which is what you wanted no. Drew Naruto felt his hopes rise at hearing. But I remember you saying you'd send her right back if something were to happen. Ouch there went that. Or did it? Actually, I said I would do so if things got out of hand but it didn't. I had everything under control so technically I didn't lie. He refrained from looking smug as it wouldn't do him much good in this situation. For a moment Naruto wondered if he should have just let her punish him, but what he didn't expect was for Yusaka to bury her face in the crook of his neck, he could hear her releasing a shuddering breath, and he couldn't help but wrap an arm around her. I'm sorry for worrying you. He mumbled softly to her, kissing the top of her head in between her ears. How can I make it up to you? Isaka removed herself from his neck and leaned up to whisper something in his ear. The blush Naruto sported was telling, and he could only nod. Oh okay, I think I can do that. But wow you're really a naughty vixen aren't you? Shut up. She gave him a light swat to his side. Sure love. End chapter. Chapter 4. For the first time in many years Naruto was nervous. Very much so. Isaka had noticed his nervousness which in turn made her nervous as well, which then resulted in their combined state being projected upon the city of Kyoto as its people. Who knew at least seemed unaware, or at least not as affected as she acted her joyful self. Now, the reason for Naruto's state of nervousness. His father was visiting Kyoto today to meet with both Yusaka and their daughter. And with one of the strongest beings in existence, one that could make the current Satans look like children in comparison paying the city she ruled over a visit, she had increased security by fivefold. While the stories her Naruto told her about Shiva were somewhat reassuring, it didn't hurt just to be sure. Everyone entering and leaving the city was being monitored, and anyone suspicious was being kept an eye on. Looking over to her love, a drop of sweat ran down the back of Yusaka's head as she watched Naruto fumble around with his outfit, having picked out something casual but also respectful looking. She on the other hand was wearing her usual shrine maiden clothes, since at least according to Naruto, it highlighted her already inhuman beauty to a level he wasn't sure existed a word for. He's such a flatterer, but she'd be lying if it didn't cause her heart to flutter each time he'd compliment her. Making her way towards him from behind, he hadn't noticed her until she snaked her arms around his torso and took his arms in his, while she was pressing herself against his back. You look fine Nehru. In fact, you're just making it look worse, see? She let go of his arms and her arms slid over his chest, feeling the hard muscles before stopping it where she could feel the crinkles beneath her digits. Erg I know but this is just he wasn't allowed to finish as Yusaka spun around to where she was facing him, before she cupped his cheeks and pulled her face down, so she could smash their lips together, her tongue plundering his mouth and leaving him silent from the unexpected onslaught. Now, Yusaka pulled back, panting a bit with red cheeks, as she fraught down her urges to remove his and her own clothes and ride him dry. Take a few breaths and calm down. You don't want to make a fool of yourself, do you? I don't. He vehemently shook his head. That was one of the last things he wanted. Then you don't need to worry. He's your father, not some stranger to impress. I know why a s a k a a a a a he whined while running a hand through his locks before taking a deep breath. Still, thank you. It's no problem. She said as she leaned against him with her head against his chest, hearing his heart thumping in his chest. It's what a wife does for her husband, right? Even if we're not married. Ouch he winced at that. He knew Yusaka wanted to get married, especially since the elders had been buggering her due to having a child out of wedlock. He actually wanted to but couldn't due to hiding his existence. Wait a minute. Since he was now known to the supernatural, not as Shiva's son, but as father of Yusaka's child what's stopping them? Say Yusaka. His voice was soft, making her blink and lean her head back. Yes Neru. 
Yuhi swallowed and licked his lips which were suddenly dry. Do you want to marry me? The gasp left her throat as Yusaka took a step back, hands trembling and eyes glistening. M. Mary. A. Are you C. Serious? Yes, he said with a warm smile. I know I put it off due to the circumstances, but with those no longer in play, I would love nothing more than to have you be my wife. For a moment it was silent as Yusaka stared at him before she jumped him, wrapping her legs around his waist and arms around his neck, his hand coming to rest on her behind to support her, as she covered his face with kisses. Yes. Yes I do. Naruto was unable from smiling as he twirled her around, a warm feeling spread through him as he reached up with one hand to wipe away some of the tears that had begun falling down her face. Isaka buried her face in the crook of his neck as he rubbed up and down her back, and he could feel and hear her sniff. Mama. Papa. Naruto turned around when he heard Kunu and saw his daughter in her own shrine maiden outfit, which looked adorable on her, staring at them with a tilt of her head. What is Mama doing? He walked up to Kunu and ruffled her hair which made her pout. She's just a bit emotional Kunu-chan. Is that bad? Naruto shook his head. No, it's not sweetie. Mama is just really happy. But why? She didn't understand. Mama looked to be crying and you only cried when you were sad, right? It was Yusaka who answered as she removed herself from him and stood on her own feet before she reached out to her daughter and hugged her close to her. It's because your papa asked me to marry him sweetheart. Mama has been waiting for that for a while. She glanced at him with a smile and nudging her head over to him. Naruto joined the two in their hug, Kunu smiling as she was held in between her parents as they offered comfort. She wouldn't mind staying here forever if she could. By now he had taken notice that his clothes were all wrinkled up, but it's how it is. Naruto perked up when he sensed his father's presence entering Kyoto and looked at Yusaka who noticed his expression. I take it it's time? Yes, I just sensed him entering the city. Alright, let's greet him then. It would be disrespectful not to, and I intend to leave a good first impression on my future father-in-law. They were standing patiently at the entrance leading to the palace, the place Yusaka and Kunu lived in, and where he had been staying in the past few weeks. Kunu stood in front of them as he and Yusaka were beside another. Coming into view, Yusaka recognized Amaterasu, surprised by the sun goddess's appearance. Her surprise quickly turned into confusion as she took note of the teenage boy walking beside her, raising a single of her delicate eyebrows at his green, bluish hair. Her eyebrow didn't lower, not even when they came to a stop before them and her golden orbs met the boy's red ones. Um why are you looking at her like that, dad? Isaka blinked as she heard Naruto's words, slowly processing them before her eyes widened. A. Naruto saw this and shook his head with a sigh. Grady sent his father a dry look which was met with his own, but he noticed the corner of his mouth curving upwards before he turned to the sun goddess. Say, what brings you here, Amaterasu? I wasn't aware you'd be tagging along. Well, with you being the son of Shiva and Yusaka being like a daughter to me, we decided an alliance would be a good way to bring our pantheons together, especially since there's already a close bond from you and Yusaka. Oh I wasn't aware of that. He looked at his father who was inspecting the small blonde fox girl that was doing her best to meet his gaze with her own. Thankfully Yusaka was brought out of her stupor as she quickly bowed her head. Please forgive me for my insolence, Shiva Dono. The god of destruction waved his hand. It's fine. I thought my son would have told you of my appearance. He glanced at Naruto who found the floor much more interesting. And there's no need for the dono suffix, especially not from my future daughter-in-law. He said making her eyes widen at how he knew that since it happened only a couple minutes ago. Naruto leaned in close to whisper after seeing her look of surprise. He can read minds. So make sure to train your mental defenses, though he won't do it now that I told you. Ah, a soft noise left her as that was certainly surprising. So, I take it she's my granddaughter. MHM, come on sweetie, introduce yourself to grandpa. The young girl took a small step forward and introduced herself with a small bow, her nine tails being held close. I am Kunu nice tea to meet you, grandpa. She said nervously as her ears flattened against her head and her big eyes flickering to him and everywhere else. Looking at her, Shiva's eye twitched as she was indeed as cute as his son described her, and from the smirk on his face, his son knew what he was thinking as well. How about we continue this inside? Don't you agree that would be better? A Madrasu bud in as she wanted to see how this'll develop and doing it out here was a bit awkward. Of course. Naruto said as he and Yasaka nodded. Follow us please. He lifted Kunu in his arms as she was still nervous and lead them in the palace to the living room. Come again. Serzichas asked Ajuka as he made the motion of clearing his ear with his finger. I said that Shiva has been spotted entering Kyoto. I see, Serzichas mused while nodding. I guess I did hear it correctly the first time. Are we sure it's actually him? Ajuka gave a nod. Yes, the information comes from one of our best spies who is 100% sure. Going as far as betting his whole credibility on it. 
and what's the Hindu god of destruction and one of the strongest beings in existence doing in Kyoto of all places. The Crimson Lucifer cried out as the atmosphere in the room became more serious. I'm not sure either Serzich is, though the report also said he was spotting together with Amaterasu making their way to the Yaokai Palace. What? It's bad enough one member of the Tremurti is out in the open, but seen together with the Shinto gods, raises even more questions. And now the Yaokai are involved as well. The latter remains unsure. That Yaokai are also involved is pure speculation. It's widely known Yasaka has ties with the Shinto pantheon. Serzich's mind went back to the faction meeting last week, which was attended by the intriguing blonde who was there on behalf of the Shinto. Not to mention that he was the elusive father of Yasaka's child which came as a surprise. Could it be that the blonde had any ties to the Hindu gods? Ajuka, remember that blonde I told you and Falbium about the other day? The one responsible for killing Kateria Leviathan? Serzich's nodded. Then I do, why? I think he may have ties to the Tremurti, or at least the Hindu gods. That made Ajuka pause. It's plausible. I've looked into him after your report and wasn't able to find much. Only that he's definitely not human as he's been sighted several times the last century, with most sightings having been in Kyoto. I knew that much. The ease of which he took care of Kateria who's an ultimate class devil told me such. Still, I want more on him, someone that powerful can't be hard to find. I'll have Serafal inform the general population to be on the lookout as well but not engage. With that said Serzich's bid his friend farewell. How did you two meet? Shiva asked his son and his fiance as they were seated in the living room, a cup of tea in his hands which was absolutely delicious. Amaterasu was there as well who had been informed that he had asked Yusaka to marry him, and she had been ecstatic, while also threatening him if he'd ever hurt her. It was actually rather admirable considering who he is and that his father was in the same room as them, but knowing Shiva, he would have punished him as well, and that was something he feared much more. How we'd meet Han Naruto said with a faint smile as he thought back. It was an interesting meeting, that's for sure. It indeed was. Yusaka agreed as she blushed, she too remembering it. Cautious, that was Naruto's current state as his quest of finding Yamada no Orochi had brought him to the mountainous area that neighborhood Kyoto. If Nyx was correct his target, the damn snake had fled to here. He wasn't sure if she spoke the truth, but chose to believe her, as she said she got the information out of some underlings of Tiffin, who had been strengthening that damn serpent and making it work for him. The damn beast even brought it back to life for it had been defeated by Susanoo many centuries ago. He had been moving all throughout Japan to kill the serpent that had tried to attack him, unfortunately, every time he'd find him it would run, go underground where he couldn't reach without blowing up the surrounding area, and the Shinto gods wouldn't be pleased if he'd do that. His attention was caught as he saw a stream of blue flames shooting into the air not too far from where he was. Deciding it was worth checking out, given that he was quite some distance away from humans and civilization and blue flames were unique to Fox Yaokai, he hurried over there quickly while still remaining unnoticed. He slowed down when he reached a clearing that had craters scattered around, trees burned down, some still lingering with flames. But that wasn't important, his attention went to the two people he saw standing in the middle of the clearing. One was clearly male with a skin pale as snow. Eyes were a sickening yellow with slitted pupils that reflected cruelty and glee. He had long black hair and was clad in loose white robes. Naruto wasn't an idiot and realized it was Arachi's human form, a bit different than last time he had laid his eyes on a snake but still recognizable. He then eyed the person opposite of the damn snake and fought down the red hue that colored his cheeks, something he hadn't experienced before. It was a young woman with long ankle-length blonde hair. She too had golden eyes yet hers radiated anger and annoyance at the snake. She was wearing what he recognized as one of those shrine maiden outfits, though hers had seen better days as it was cut near the shoulders, almost causing her breast to spill out which he noted were large, even from the distance. There was also a cut on the side of her leg, showing her bare thigh which blood was trickling down from. Her nails were sharp, like claws and licked by blue flames, but what caught his attention the most had to be the golden bushy tails coming out of her tailbone. All nine of them and the ears peeking out between her hair on top. My omy dot Arachi purred as he eyed her up and down, his long tongue coming out of his lips. That look in your eyes, that defiance. It almost make feel all hot and bothered imagining it staring up to me, broken and defeated when I'm done with you Yusaka Haim. I heard you've been saving yourself, is that correct? He caught the flash of fear crossing his features as she had an idea what he was going to say before schooling her emotions. MHMMM of course it is. To think today would be my lucky day. Not only will I be able to end Kyoto's princess, but I'll even give you the honor of experiencing the pleasure of flesh, whether you want to or not. Arachi let out a sickening laughter that had the fur of Yusaka's tail stand straight from the thought of losing her purity from rape by someone as sickening as the serpent before her. If worse came to worse she'd rather kill herself instead of giving Arachi the pleasure of using her in that manner. Oh my what do we have here? 
a male voice rang through the clearing, causing Yasaka to look around before spotting a blonde looking to be in his twenties, casually walk towards them. Yasaka eyed him with curiosity as she didn't feel any power from him, but knew that the blonde wasn't human. His eyes, those colorful orbs and the casual manner he strutted to them told her that much. Her suspicions were only confirmed when she saw the fear-filled expression on Arachi's face, who seemed to have paled several shades wider than he already was. Why you? Arachi stuttered, taking a step back which made Yusaka even more interested to see what or who could struck such fear into the serpent who had been able to handle her with little issue. W why are you here? Arachi, Arachi you didn't think I was going to let you run around freely, didn't you? Especially after that pathetic attempt after catching me off guard last time. Isaka curiously listened in as it seemed the blonde had some history with the serpent. I've been searching for you through Japan with no luck. At least until Nyx directed me here. Imagine my surprise after wandering around when I noticed the blue flames of a fox yakai I find you here, threatening to not just kill, but to rape the beautiful woman behind me. The air in the clearing became choking as the blonde's presence made itself known. Yusaka felt like she was being crushed, like an actual mountain had been dropped on her shoulders as she couldn't move, even just breathing became a chore. This presence was much more than anything she had felt before, Arachi was like an ant in comparison to this blonde. You've been running from me for a while now so I made sure you won't be able to escape this time. This clearing is sealed off from the real world, not even hiding underground will save you from me. The blonde moved to Yusaka, taking a hold of her hand which had her blush as a warm feeling spread through her entire being, and she could feel her wounds heal and her fatigue disappear. The oppressive weight disappeared as well, for her at least as Arachi was still frozen. You stay safe, okay? This will be over soon. The soft manner of how spoke along with the concern he showed for her caused her to blush furiously as she felt her heart pounding in her chest. This was different than any interaction she had before. But she wasn't able to ponder on it as he pulled back his hand and turned to face Arachi. Now, since you've got nowhere to run I wonder how long you last. Naruto grinned as Arachi backpaddled, frantically looking for a means to escape which there was none. Faster than either Yusaka or Arachi were able to react Naruto was already beside him with his fist buried deeply in the serpent's stomach. It was as if time seemed to stop for a moment before a gust of wind was expelled where his fist met contact and Yusaka had to put her hands up to her face as the gust made her hair flutter. Blurg. Spittle and blood left Arachi's mouth, and he was about to be launched back before Naruto grabbed a hold of his leg, before slamming him in the ground, hard enough to form a several feet wide and deep crater. He lifted the unmoving Arachi up by his long hair before with a casual flick of his wrist sent him sprawling to the side. I know you're weak, but even someone as vile and disgusting as yourself would be able to survive that. Oh ho ho ho. True to his word Arachi got to his feet, looking relatively unharmed, while still wearing that sickening smile. Truly the word of your strength isn't exaggerated. To think a mere brat like yourself, regardless of who your father is would already be this powerful. You know of me? Indeed, Tiffin informed me of you. It's why he wanted me to take you out which unfortunately failed. Tiffin did Hanaruto mused with a nod. How interesting. As far as I'm aware that dirty serpent is in hiding as well. I wonder if I tell my father about his pathetic assassination attempt, he may have to go in hiding indefinitely. Then again, the only place a dirty snake should be is beneath my boot. Isaka was paying rapt attention between the words that were exchanged, her eyes widened in shock when Arachi mentioned Tiffin, the Greek king of monsters, and said to be in the top 10 strongest. Her shock only increased when the blonde said that his father, whoever that may be was powerful enough to force someone of Tiffin's caliber in hiding. Her interest in the blonde just continued to increase. How about we continue? You going in that disgusting form of yours or are you already since neither are a joy to look at? Not letting him reply Naruto created a triple-layered magic circle, going from large to smaller. They each rotated, clockwise, counterclockwise and clockwise again. Seeing the attack and sensing the build-up of energy, Arachi was barely able to slam his hands down on the ground before him when it shot in a concentrated laser towards him. Ojirashiman. His yell was drowned out by the ear-shattering explosion that followed, and Yusaka closed her eyes, fearing for her life while also covering her ears. However, when she didn't feel a thing she hesitantly opened her eyes to see the blonde standing before her with one arm outstretched, forming a translucent barrier of sorts, as the rest of the clearing was filled with dust and dirt. As it began to die down, Arachi's form came into view, severely mangled but still alive. That almost, ghrk, killed me. He coughed up more blood and shakily got back to his feet as Naruto let the barrier drop while clicking his tongue. I'm surprised you're still alive. Must have been whatever you did, but I wonder how much longer you last. Naruto taunted. You insolent child. Arachi hissed as Naruto scoffed. Be silent you useless snake. You're nothing. Why Tiffin brought you back to life escapes me as I had more power in me than you do now when I was still a child. 
Naruto held his hand out as a small ball of condensed energy began to form, taking on a deep purple color. This right here has enough energy to wipe Japan off the face of the earth, Yasaka let out a shocked gasp. The concept of destruction given form. It makes the Bale's power of destruction pale in comparison. This is who you are dealing with. You say I'm a child, but if I am one you must be a harmless hatchling. Perhaps had you never shown yourself before me you'd enjoy the second time you've been given, but now it'll come to an end. Naruto threw the small ball in the air where it levitated for a few seconds, as the blonde put up another barrier around himself and the fox woman behind him. Hakai, Outerworld Erasure. Arachi let out dozens of curses as he tried to throw his own attacks at the small purple ball, all which were fruitless as it exploded with a flash so bright one could have seen it in space, had it not been contained as it was. It felt like minutes to Yusaka until the bright lights eventually died down, and when it did she let out a gasp once more as the surrounding area was gone. There was simply nothing there, not around them or beneath them as all she saw was a dark chasm that went on for as far as her eyes could see. She knew Arachi was dead. In fact, she wasn't sure who was capable of surviving said attack, as it seemed to live up to its name. She watched as Naruto stepped out of the barrier and shocking her by floating there, seemingly inspecting the results before she saw a large magic circle form the entire circumference of the chasm, as much to her surprise dirt came out of it and started to fill up the hole. When the barrier around her collapsed her feet met the dirt ground which she tested before sending the blonde an incredulous look after which she got to her knees and thanked him. Um it was no bother. Naruto said a bit awkward. Like I said I've been searching for him for some time now. I'm just glad I came here in time speaking of which, what was someone of your status doing out here, battling against Yamada no Orochi? Isaka growled I went after him as he killed several of my people. I wasn't going to let that slide. I unfortunately underestimated him and wasn't aware of his true identity until he revealed it when I arrived here or I would have brought back up. I see. That makes much more sense do you need any more help or else I'll be on my way. W wait. You can't just leave after saving me like that. She pointed her finger to him with a glare. Naruto sent her a confused look. Why not? Because because I want to properly thank you. I know, I know you don't need me to. She said after seeing him about to object. But I want to. That's why I'm asking you to come with me to Kyoto. You can even use the hot springs there which I'm sure you'd like to relax. Naruto let out a hum at her suggestion, glancing at her to see her playing with one of her tails while swaying on her feet. It wouldn't hurt and he heard a lot of good things from Kyoto's hot springs which he wished to experience himself alright, I'll go with you. Isaka's eyes sparkled and before he could react she took his arm before dragging him with her as she began making her way back to Kyoto. And that's it really. A party of sorts was held for me as a thank you for saving her. Yusaka and I had spent hours talking before I left while promising her I'd come back soon. Naruto finished as he looked at Shiva and the Matarasu. You're not surprised. Shiva said to the sun goddess who shook her head. No, I'm not. I already heard the story though some details were left out at the time. What mainly had us worried at the time was that Yamada no Orochi had been brought back to life without our knowledge. We were very thankful for his interference and saving Yasaka's life. Shiva let out a hum. I see. Still, hearing that Tiffin sending assassins after you and that he's aware of our relationship was not what I expected. Trust me dad, I was surprised as well. Which is why I made sure there was nothing of Orochi left. Not even his soul. Yes, you did well. A bit overkill, but who am I to complain? He joked which made his son chuckle. Anything else you wish to ask dad? Yes, but this one is about something more recent. Your wedding, when is it going to be held and where? The question caught him off guard and he blinked a few times before answering. I'm not sure about when, but I don't want to make Yusaka wait too long. She has wanting to marry me before we even had Kunu, haven't you? He playfully nudged her which had her huff while lightly swatting him on the arm. As for where I was thinking here in Kyoto, amongst her people. Unless she wants somewhere else. Isaka quickly shook her head. I want to hold it in Kyoto as well. Well, there you have it. Kyoto it is. The two of us will be looking into dates, but I'll make sure to tell you when we find one we agree on. That's fine with me. Unfortunately I have to head back as who knows what Brahma and Vishnu are doing without someone keeping them in check. Shiva stood up and so did Naruto, Yasaka and Amaterasu, Kunu following when Yasaka used one of her tails to get her off the couch. It was nice meeting the woman my son is so enamored by and seeing the genuine love between you two. He bent down a bit to ruffle his granddaughter's hair. And it was nice meeting you as well, Kunu. Perhaps you can bring her too with you if you visit me next time, Naruto. I'm sure those two back at home will be delighted to meet her. Eh, I'll see what I can do. I need Yusaka's permission, after all. I'll probably drop by soon anyway to discuss certain matters I had almost forgotten. I look forward to that then. Have a great day. 
with that Shiva, much like his son usually did simply teleported out of the room back to India. I have to leave as well. Amaterasu said to the engaged couple. Oh. If you need any help with the wedding be sure to call me, okay Yasaka-chan. Bye then. She too left but with a flash of light. Well, Naruto turned to Yasaka once the sun goddess was gone. What do you think? He's not what I expected. Yusaka answered after a short pause. That's all. Hearing that, Naruto couldn't help but let out a boisterous laugh, being joined by Kunu halfway in, even though the little girl had no idea why her father was laughing in the first place. End chapter. What if Naruto Power of Destruction High School DXD, and thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.